Hey, holy crap, hello. I got my male or female, whatever these are, pin things in. The idea is this. I'm going to take two stacks of these SIL turn pin mofos and I'm going to stick them one half a click down. Then I'm going to glue the whole strip together. Then I'm going to put a chip in them. That's how it's going to sit. It's going to sit in here like this SIL turn pin. I might just say hell with it and just stick them in there individually. Cut out the 10 on each side because it's at 20, 20 pins. I bought two packs of 10. I bought, thought I bought two packs of 20. Should be more than enough to get this done. So I will just simply put said mofos yep, in like that on one side and then scooting down a little tickle because it's staggered pins and knock them both out because you can't see a damn thing. You ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dang. When you have dill pickles for fingers and you're trying to put small things in I just lost one there it is it's uh it's fun to say at least yep yep nope this is a little harder than I expected that's why I was going to glue them together there we go that is one and I'm going to solder that in I might glue these together just for stability but once they're soldered in there they're going to be fine and I'm going to continue that all the way down so the first meg of chip ram, which is these guys, will then be socketed and the second meg will be on the original eight factory sockets. Alright, so that is one. So welcome back, it's about a little bit later. So the first one I did, whoa this pizza's heavy. I did individually and that kind of screwed me up. So the next batch of all of them, seven, I put in and taped each one down and individually soldered them in. Yeah, that's a lot of solder. All the ones with the black dots on the top. Here are the ones that I did. I don't know how well that is coming across on the camera with the 40,000 lumens of light above my head. But what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is is the next phase in this freaking nightmare of a no chip ram chip ram chip is in. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert the ram that is 80 nanoseconds because the Sanyo branded 110, what is these? Yeah, 110 nanosecond stuff that's soldered onto the board, I don't know about. It was working, then it's not. Now I saved most of those chips, but I'm going to use these uh, Texas Instruments 44256-80, excuse me. Making sure I, well, all right. Then they just wiggle into place. And that's pretty much it. Now it's no big deal. I'm glad I got the sockets in now. I think I put it all in backwards. <laughs> I put it all in backwards because I'm dumb. And just so I know that the RAM goes with the writing facing that way, I think. Yeah, there's the crystals. So the notch is at the top and it's the writing is facing away. So that means that pin one is top left on all these. So I'm going to insert these bad boys. Our RAM is in, our power is hooked up, our video is on. We have power to the power supply. Let's hit the button. And see what we get. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, oh. Mortimer! Holy god damn, we are back. But I have 128k of chip RAM. Alright. Holy god, something's still weird. How do I have 128k of chip RAM when I have a Meg in there? The best part about that is, I have something. I have something. Let's go to a memory test, okay? I'm sorry if this is so bright. It is, it's so bright in here. All right, I'm a little bit away so we can see both sides. This is the serial cable, this is the Amiga itself. We're gonna do a uh, test detected chip mem, no, I need to do the extended chip mem test. Why? Because I need to see if it's failing anywhere again. 
Now I only have one mega chip ram in the SL turn pins, and I think I got them in all correct. The idea is it should be 1024. Now it will blow if shadow memory or two megs is detected. Shadow memory detected. Scan stopped. I got something back, which is cool. Something. I have a display on the Amiga side now, which is way better than I had. I had fast RAM. Fast RAM is fine. I'm not worried about that. Get the hell out of here. I can't escape it. Oh, crap. No key. To, no key. Yeah, yep. Hold on. I forgot to kick, hit a button. I have to click a right mouse button. Okay. All right. Do I have? Yes. All right. Good. So, now that I have my serial communications, let's do something. Graphics test. I have diagram picture. So I have some RAM. We have 128K of chip RAM. Can't do that. Can't do that. There's not enough memory. You can do raster. Whoops. RGB test. I have RGB test. Got that. That's, I mean, that's great. That's working. Crazy how I have no uh, thing. Let's see system info. That's normal. 128k at chip RAM. Look, unused chip RAM, 52463 bytes. Chip RAM starts at F to 01F. That is wrong. I don't know. I need to see improvements. So, I'm going to remove all of this RAM. Well, I've had a bunch of chips. I don't know if they're going to be the right ones or not. There, I got diagram on both screens. Amiga's up, but 128k chip RAM. Extended chip mem test. It's going to detect freaking shadow RAM. Why? Look, shadow RAM detected. I want to see what this crap says here. We're going to scroll through it together because I don't know what all this means. I turned it off, by the way. We're just scrolling through the buffer. Detected chip RAM. Detected motherboard fast mem zero. It said 16384. Look, that's the right address right there. Crimson Tide. All right. What I'm going to do is I know this will boot diagram. 120k chip RAM, 16384 fast RAM. So we have RAM. Audio does work, but I don't have enough memory for the mod. I only have 128k. Complete memory detection, 16 megs of fast RAM. So it's been a couple days, maybe a week. I don't know. I ordered the new 44256 RAM. I replaced U709. It is a 74F245 PC. Got a whole sleeve of those. Replaced that one because I was having low continuity on several of the pins. Nothing. But that did shed some little bit of partial, maybe, sort of kind of light. I took this chip out. Okay? Remember, I socketed everything. I'll take the last chip, and I will flip them. Watch this. This is weird stuff. So this chip is now first. This chip is now last. Okay. We're all in. Turn it back on. Watch what happens. That's well, gonna work. Oh no, look at that. UDS LDS fail. Red, 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 red. Your mom. Green, red. We're gonna do this till the end of time. And that's crazy. Cool. If I have this one chip in, which is ironically 128 kilobytes, is it? I thought it was 256. 256K X4. Four of them are So I'm getting half of one of these. I don't know. So we're going to pull all these out and see what the hell happens. So I'm only rocking off one meg now. These are brand new NOS stock Oki Datas. Brand new. $60. And the ink is just coming off of my hands. All right. Ink from the marker. I'm going to put these in. And we're going to see what happens. These are brand new. 44256. Brand new, brand new. 120K chip RAM. Son of a biscuit. As a test, I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to reverse the two chips. I don't know why, because they're brand new. 120k chip RAM. If I go to memory tests, extended chip RAM test, it's going to shadow RAM, and we're not going to see anything. We'll do it on the actual Amiga side. It'll just shadow RAM out and poop out. So after, once it gets to 128k, shadow RAM, memory detected, scan stopped. Originally, before I started messing with these sockets, it would go 
more and uh, have no memory. So somewhere along the line, something else screwed up. That's just great. That means I am nowhere. And three weeks in, uh, I'm at a loss. I have scanned all these things that people were telling me to scan. I'm going to have to do some magic, channel my inner Gadget UK, and bust out the logic probe and look for those low-high things. That seems to give him a lot of success. But I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm going to bust out the 3000T schematics that the people on A1K.org sent the brother and start doing that. I just figured, hey, we're getting somewhere with some sockets and some new RAM. So that means that my RAM is probably good, and the RAM before it, which was good, is probably still good, and something is holding one of these bastards in here low. Could it be a resistor pack? It could be. I don't know what values they are. I'll have to look those up. Can you even still buy them? I have the 646s. I have the Fairchilds, the same one. I have every chip, same AE, whatever that AE is. Got those, got the whole RAM buffers, but I doubt all six popped. Whatever this thing displays is doing something, that's great. All greens, green okay. Unused chip, 52463 bytes. Chip RAM starts at F to 1FBFF. What? Okay, so in this bucket of joy here, U257, U258, there are 74F. 245 whatever buffer chips and I am going to replace those why you ask because I already replaced U251 the other buffer up here that does the CMA I did this one already and that didn't do crap I also did U709 which is not even listed in here it was just part of the standard glue logic. And, uh, yeah, these are all the other layout of these. It's weird. And they're little 33 picofarad, microfarad, your mom farad ceramics, which I'll check out. I also did continuity testing from one end of the line to the other end of the line, all the way across, and everything works out fine. Replaced all the fast RAM. My next hop is to replace the four buffer chips, or, uh, yep, whatever these guys are, logic chips. These 646s right here on the left-hand side of your screen, scrolling up and down. That's the next step. So I'm going to replace 257 and 258, and they're literally right next to each other. They both have a capacitor on them. They are right here. These guys right here, 257, 258, cap, and cap. I needed to do this and work. Why? Because I want to press down on each chip. So 257. Bingo! <laughs> Can I repeat that? Okay, so I'm on to something. I was right. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing on 258 if it still works this time. 258. Nothing. Pressing. 253 buffer chip, nothing. 254 logic chip, nothing. 256. 256. 256 is putting stress on 257 near it. Okay. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. That's something. That is significant something. That's the old Edwards logic probe. Dill pick will just start pressing on stuff. See what F's up. I was going to replace that guy anyway, and that way. I was just going to go gun home and replace them all. I don't know what happened. It's 30 years old, guys. Things happen. Chips burn out. And God, I am cutting this out. So, if you haven't seen how I remove a chip, I go over with a cutter and I put the, the dude on the very top of the IC. And I just kind of snip it free. What that does is that pops that pin out. Alright? And you can repeat that. <laughs> all the way across. and pull your chip right out. You'll have to do both sides, of course. But, once there, just drop your tool right on the board. So with the chip out, remove it. La la, toss it aside. Grab your hot soldering iron, and you see this 
point right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my clippers again, grab it, touch it, and it'll pull right out. See that? And then when I'm done done, where's the trash can? When I'm done removing all of these pins this same way, number one, I've safely removed them. Didn't have to risk damaging solder sucking or braid or anything like that. I can then braid these holes clean and you're starting to see them appear here. Braid these holes clean and be uh, a nice clean you see how these are coming out nice and easy. I'm not like burning it, I'm not racing, I'm taking my time, just touching and they come right out. Now I will have to clean my iron a couple times because they uh you do get solder on them. There we go. So you can see the top row has been removed there. I don't know how good, but you know, see it now? There you go. The legs are on this side still, but that side is clean. Anyway, put the chip in. This is what happens. Same 128K. It does the same thing. It does pop up on the screen. You know. 120K. There's something going on in this area because if I press on 257, give it a good smack. That's not going to do it now. 258, the other buffer chip. There you go. Gets to the shadow ram and craps out again. Alright, well that's one buffer. Let's do 258. Why not? We're in here, you know. I replaced U257 and 258. And we still have 128k chip ram. All of my pressing on things doesn't result in it freaking out anymore. So I think my whatever is fixed, but it's not fixed. So the next step is to replace the 646s, but I'm telling you, I don't think Hello that's it. Hello from yet another day, and today is the day I'm replacing the four buffer chips, U253, 254, 255, 256. If I do this, the entire chip RAM system has been replaced. I've already replaced U251, U709, which isn't really directly related. Um... U251, U202, uh, no, 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 uh, U201, U204. So, the next lot, and 257 and 258 last night. So, that was the buffers. Now we're doing the uh, uh, 74 646s. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm just going to get them out of there and I'm replacing all four. And it don't work. So, I got all the buffers back in. All the chips, 646s have been replaced. 120k of chip RAM. 120k. It's less than an Amiga 1000. That's not right. This is weird. I've replaced all the 646s, 257, 258, all of the chip RAM, U251. I have not replaced the two resistor packs because I am done with this for a while. It has been over three weeks. I have other stuff I gotta do. I want to get this fixed because I was gonna do a review on it. But the thing I did the review on is what blew this all up. That's not good, is it? No. So, I will touch back another day. Funny, you bastard.